We start today with a knock on the door of Gina's apartment. It's one of the funny Martins. There's a plethora of Martins and most of them really aren't funny at all, but Jerome is definitely one of the funnier ones. He comes in harassing all the women, especially Pam. He keeps calling her junk in the trunk. He's trying to sell him a Jerome teddy bear, or as he calls it, pretty teddy. He comes with all the features, including deep fried hair, and it says all your favorite Jerome phrases. They kick him the hell out, and while he's being escorted out, he asks if he could have a threesome with them. Why did they even let this predator in in the first place? We cut over to Martin's apartment and he's fronting with his friends about how his life ain't falling apart. He talks about how him and Gina are going to get back together and it ain't nothing. Tommy asks if he has submitted any job applications or gone on any job interviews. And you know, Martin, he starts selling wolf tickets. Tommy offers Martin a job. Q, Tommy, you ain't got no job. If you've seen a show, you understand. Cole offers Martin a job at the airport and Martin is too bougie for manual labor. Gina and Pam walk in and Tommy hits Pam with the deep voice, sup girl. Cole is confused cause he thought Martin and Gina were broke up. Martin explains how they're growing apart to get closer and all the complexities of a relationship. They're pretty complex though and Cole is a simple dude so he doesn't get it. Gina then walks out and asks Bart if he got a job directly in front of everybody, which is wild disrespectful. But Martin is an asshole, so he needs to be humbled occasionally. Pam has a gift for Martin. A stool so he can sit on it at the unemployment office, but they got chairs there, so I don't really get that one. I thought she was gonna go with a short joke like she usually does. Pam is leaving and Tommy gets up trying to be smooth. His head's shiny like baby oil, but the studio audience is going crazy, so clearly he got game here. Martin starts going through the paper talking about how everything isn't good enough for him. Gina tells him to take his ass down to the unemployment office. He tells her he's a high commodity item and they're gonna come calling and she tells him to just go man he's mad delusional still and still she tries to reason with this unreasonable man he says there ain't a hot links chance at a cookout that he's gonna go there Martin is down at the unemployment office dressed like a KGB agent who flashes people. His number is called and Myra is the teller. If you don't know, he went on a double date with her and Stan at some point a couple seasons ago. Martin tries to act Hollywood. Nobody knows who he is and most just look at him like he's a threat to public safety. Michael Irvin over here tells him, man, sit your ass down. One of my favorite lines from Martin. Myra offers him some jobs, but Martin's pride makes him overvalue his skill set. But eventually he ends up in the entertainment business. He works the mic at Hoochie Burger, one of my least favorite jokes in Martin. Martin returns home from his first day of Hoochie Burger and he already quit. Gina tells him he can't be a bum forever and he needs a job today. Martin says he has an image, which is hilarious because he had a radio show, so nobody knows what he looks like. If anything, he has a sound he needs to maintain. Gina then shows him this fat stack of bills. He says he has at least 30 days to pay him and ain't nothing gonna happen. And then the lights get cut off. He never even opened any of these bills. How would he even know what the due date was? How you know what 30 days is? We're at Gina's apartment and she still has belief in Martin. Right at that moment, he crushes all of that belief and barges in dressed like a mail carrier. Martin still couldn't make it through one singular day at a job. He's mad he wasn't promoted to the head mail carrier in the first 24 hours. He has a bag full of his own bills and this dude is under pressure. He owes everybody and he's going through every stage of manic depression. Gina tries to give him some money and Martin says he would rather have his pride and be homeless than take help. Gina says he needs to check his pride at the door. Martin storms out en route to the unemployment office to take the first job he gets offered. Back at the unemployment office, Michael Irvin is still here two days later, so I think he might be a US Air Marshal. Martin then walks up and kicks some dude off his spot and tells Myra, I need a job. She doesn't believe in him because of his repeated history of quitting jobs on the very first day. She, being an undeservedly altruistic black queen, gives him a second chance. She gets him a job as a janitor. Every black dude gotta be a janitor at some point. He has his first paycheck and this man made 77.43. Think the minimum wage in this this time was like three some, if I'm not mistaken. So I think this dude worked like 20 hours actually. Dog, uh, he didn't work 20 hours. He worked 40 hours and got his taxes taken out. This dude really worked a 40 hour week probably, or like two weeks, oh my God. Martin maintains a positive attitude, which to be honest is definitely better than I would have been. Martin then shows why he only makes 77.43 because he damages everything, which I'm guessing is taking out his paycheck.